Hello? Parveen? Hey, I can uh, hear you now. Yeah. Ah, there you are. Awesome. Yeah, there we go. Finally, we got a connection. How are you? I'm good. I'm a little late. Sorry. No worries. No worries. Not my style. No worries. But I'm here. Great. I'm happy to be here. Awesome. Great to have you over, at, like always. Do you seem ready to sleep right now? Uh, it's a little late. That's, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us late uh, Canada time. Uh, and of course, let's talk about your fight first. You are fighting Juan Adams the Kraken on uh, May 5th in Ottawa, correct? Correct, correct. May 4th. Okay, it's going to be 5th morning here. That's why I said May 5th. Okay, I got you. Okay. It's going to be Sunday morning, May 5th here, and we are all going to be watching the fight and excited. Do you think this is your toughest fight till date, or is every fight as, as tough as the other? Every, you know what? Once you get to the UFC, everyone's tough, right? Everyone brings something to the table. Um, everyone's earned their place here. So, you know, every fight's tough um, in its own way, but uh, we like the matchup. I, I feel I'll match up very well for this, and it's going to be a fantastic performance. Awesome. Well, we look forward to it. Now, now tell me, do you want to say anything about how you are uh, approaching the fight? He does. I think he's on the four zero or five zero. He's undefeated, right? Yeah, five zero, five stoppages. Um, you know, he's he, he's been doing well. You have to respect that. He's a big dude. He cuts down a lot of weight, um, and you know, he, he obviously has power. But uh, that's where the respect stops. You know, everyone has that in the heavyweight weight class. These are the big boys. Um, so it's not unique what he brings to the table. What I bring to the table is unique. I, I bring my movement, my agility, my stamina, my wrestling credentials, my my striking. Uh, it's all unique. It's 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 uh it's gonna be it's gonna be a great fight. I, I we beat him in the striking, we beat him in the wrestling, um, and, and we beat him more than anything where I'm at. Um, this is a way of life for me now, man. I've been doing this for for my entire life. You know, he he's every day he's a TV character. He's on Dana, Dana White show because he's a character. Uh, he's not a true professional. Um, he made it on a reality show. Uh, he likes to, uh, collecting the paycheck, um, but that's where it stops. He's never fought someone like me, and he's in deep waters now. Uh, and he's undisciplined. Uh, he's insecure, um, and he oozes that if you just watch any of his stuff. And and that's how he's gonna break. I'm gonna test him, and and that that will be exposed not only to him but to the world. Well, so strong words, and we really look forward to that fight now. And uh, are, are you still looking uh, ahead of that, or is it one fight at a time, of course? Always one fight at a time. I do have a, an idea for what I want to happen in the future. You always have to create your own life. Um, and so, you know, this is, I've, I've, I decided to fight out my contract. Um, so we're going to look to get the numbers right in the contract right after this fight. Okay. So, um, so this is your last fight on your contract? Correct, correct. Okay. Now tell me one thing, do you think you are in a, a better position negotiating with the UFC because they are looking at India? You know, they have been of course for some time, so nobody really knows when they're going to they're gonna come, but do you think that puts you in a better position? Um, I believe so, I believe your uniqueness is always, I mean, look at Greg Hardy, the guy's cool main eventing uh, a UFC event this weekend. He has no business to be even in the UFC. He's not at that level, um, but he has uniqueness behind him, you know. Um, so, so he's in a position to, to leverage that. Um, I think I have a uniqueness about me, definitely. Um, you know, the UFC is coming to Vancouver as well. Um, so, you know, that's my hometown. Um, I, we're gonna shut the place down. You know, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And then, and then coming to India, obviously, um, uh, I'm the guy for that. And and and. Uh, uh, not only just for the skill set and and, and, and and all of that success, because you can come from any country you want. If you can't win at a high level, it, it doesn't mean shit. Um, and I, I, I can be in there with the best, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm shooting for that goal, and I have a skill set. And beyond that, um, you know, I, I you're not just in, uh, planting me down there. I have a real connection to the, to, to the homeland, to my culture, to the roots, and I represent that and always have even before the UFC. 
Um, so it's a natural fit for the company. It's a natural sell for the company. Um, and it's a natural fit for us uh, as a community and as a people. I, it's it's going to be great. It's going to do great things on, on the ground out there. Now, uh, Aditya Ranganajan has, a, has an interesting question for you based on you saying that you want to fight out your contract. Is there, does that also mean that there's a chance you could go to a Bellator or, you know, in, in, in some other international promotion or an upcoming Indian promotion? Or is, are these all possibilities then if you're fighting out your contract? Absolutely. You know, the, the, the market we're in now, you got the UFC, you got Bellator, you got one. These yeah. are the major players. Um, and you'd be crazy not to, uh, to, to test all your worth and, and, and all that type of thing. Um, and... So yeah, that's where it's at. I, I know my worth, and I know, you know, where I want to be. Um, and, and just sometimes you have to, you know, put the, put the put the cards in your own hands. Um, and that's where we're at. I got a great management company guiding me through this, uh, and you know, I'll, I'll trust their trust their abilities in negotiating on my behalf. Um, and we'll go from there. Great. Now. Uh, coming to one of the topics that we're we're talking about uh, uh, today, you know, recently you saw uh, Khabib and Connor going at it, and religion entered into the picture. You know, where the UFC had to then shut them down. You know, and we have recently also seen uh, a lot of upsurge in the amount of uh, 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 talk and hate in MMA groups in India, which I which I used to not see before, based on religion and and based on uh, uh, the fans following people from their own religion. You know, now uh, uh, also, you know, there are positive ways of looking at it. There are negative ways of looking at it. There's, there's ways in which po fighters bring a positivity to it. There are ways that some people, of course, uh, you know, uh, both fighters and uh, fans can bring negativity to it. It, it did also, uh, I want to go back to uh, uh, something uh, Dana White had said when Yol Romero, uh, uh, you know, made some statements in the cage about, you know, Jesus, don't forget, uh, America, don't forget Jesus. I think something to that effect where Dana White said, listen, buddy, uh, keep religion to your house and don't bring it into the cage. You know, now in yeah. the background of that, of course, like I said, you know, there are positive ways of using it. You know, you, you were, I think, given, if you want to call it an exemption, and you were... Uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 allowed to wear the turban, you know, into the cage as well, which is also a religious symbol in a way and a cultural one as well. You know, so what do you think? Uh, uh, what is your take on it? Is it is it, of course, based on the intention of the fighter, or is it a risky uh, thing going down, uh, uh, which opens up? Is it like a Pandora's box? Let let's say that is it a, is it a Pandora's box which can open up? Uh, uh, you know the MMA world, like we, like I said, like we recently saw in the Conor Khabib, you know, uh, Twitter fight of going down a path, a religious path that we may not want to go down. Yeah, you know that's a loaded question. I think uh, you know it, it is obviously there's good and bad to it. Um, you know, it's it's good to be passionate. You know, it's good to have a sense of belonging to a certain community. Uh, religious, ethnic, cultural, whatever. Um, it, why not? Why not re represent that? That's who you are. You know, there's, you know, there's too many people in this uh, in this world, in my opinion, that are always trying to be like everybody else nowadays with the social media stuff. Um, so it's a it's a good way to to be real, to represent who you are. If 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 you are proud of that, if you live it. Um, so you know, you know, whatever it's worked out positively, it's been great. There's a reason they're going to uh, Dubai with Khabib. You know what I mean, uh, and, and you know he he represents his uh, his culture, his, his religion, his heritage proudly, and he and and he's real about it. Um, but then when it gets out of hand, like 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 you touched on with Connor, you know he doesn't understand. You cross, I think he does understand actually. You cross those lines, he knows what he's doing. He's very calculated in that regard. Um, it's real. You don't you don't. You don't touch on family. You don't touch on religion. You don't touch on on on, on certain things like that because that's that's real, especially to the people from the east. Um, but he's doing that on purpose, right? He, he's a counter fighter. He gets guys riled up, so they come at him and he, and he clips them. That's 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 honor. Um, the UFC loves it for sure. You know, like you said, they provide a mean exemption um, to be able to do that. Um, anything to 
anything to connect with more fans and, and to allow you know fighters to do that in a positive way. When it gets out of hand, it doesn't look good on the sport, the brand, uh, all of that stuff. Um, and I, I think you know Connor's doing a few things that don't look good beyond just religion um, and attacking people's religions and belief systems. He's got a handful of other things, uh, uh, you know, uh, court cases and stuff. He's got to handle now. Um, so uh, I don't know what's going on over there, but. You know, on me, on my end, um, you know, my personal, I, I, I love I love representing it. Um, even back at home, man, in, in, in India, there, there's some craziness, you know, you, uh, with uh, uh, the attacks on minorities and, and, and rights and that type of stuff, especially currently, it's scary stuff. Um, and we know how complicated, um, you know, uh, the makeup of, of the Indian Republic is, yeah. um, and, uh, how hard it was to come together and all that. So... Uh, I think it's important to 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 respect um, each other's rights and belief systems um, and, and come together and embrace that. Um, there's always two. There's love and hate. There's fear and there's love. Always in this life, two options. Um, and, and if you can always use a positive, always always come together. Um, that that's fantastic. But there will always be you know people on the on the flip side. But you know that that's that's the world we live in, man. Pick your side. Well, well, great. You know, like like we said, you know, unfortunately, there are more people who would use it in a, in in a negative way. So what I'm trying to say is, is is it perhaps safer not to open that box and go down that road? Um, but as soon as you start doing that, what where do we draw the line? Yeah. If we're talking about safe and you know fear, and then now you're allowing you know a small minority of people to control everybody else and what they want to be and how they want to live isn't that what this life's about you should be able to do what you want to do as long as you're not hurting anybody you, you should be able to represent what you do uh, what you want and, and live how you want um, as soon as you start you know especially you know people getting overly offended nowadays trying to stay so politically correct forget that bullshit you know uh, we're not all politicians you know we're normal people let those politicians pander to votes and play those types of games um, as soon as you start you know, pulling that stuff back because someone might, you know, use it negatively or, you know, that person's in the wrong. That person needs to be sorted out. Um, you know, you should be, you should be free to represent what you want, believe in what you want to believe. Um, it's, that's your, as long as you're not doing anything negatively or hurting anybody, it, that's your God-given right. Absolutely. So, uh, I, I, I was just, uh, thinking of something, I lost my, uh, a train of thought uh, anyways so basically it is up to the intention of both uh, the, the the fighters and the people following it following them and we need to uh, uh, trust in that yeah I, I, I remember now what I was saying was is we spoke to of course a couple of other people as well and what uh, uh, Mohammed Farhad who's an Indian MMA fighter Jitendra Khare who's a coach and promoter here and both of them seem to seem to say, uh, which is, I would say, reflective of what Dana White is saying, is that in the octagon, you leave religion. Hello? Can you hear us? Hello? Is he connecting? Hello? 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 Okay, let's see if we just need to reconnect. Sorry guys, give us a minute. We are trying to reconnect with Arjun Bullock. with him again.
Hey, Bob, sorry, sorry. you got disconnected. No worries, sorry, sorry. sorry. So sorry. what I was saying was, I, I remembered my train of thought, is basically uh, uh, what uh, we had a, 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 an Indian MMA fighter, a very well-known Indian MMA fighter called Muhammad Farad on the show, a, a coach, Jinder Kare, and also what Dana White seems to uh, uh, say in his Yol Romero statement was, you know, you keep religion out of the out of the cage. Whatever you want to believe in, outside of it, who you want, whoever you want to pray to, whatever you know. Let let's say even if you want to, you know, you know, represent your community, whatever you want to do, you keep it outside of the cage. But inside the cage, hello, 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 hello. hello? Can you hear us? Hello? Yeah, we're back. So basically, basically, yeah, basically inside the cage, you keep religion out. Is, is that what you are basically saying as well? Or do you have a different viewpoint? Well, when you're in the cage, it's a fight. Yeah. Religion ain't going to help you there. I'll tell you that much. Um, so essentially, I think it is out. Um, but I think, you know, in between that, obviously, you know, be who you are, represent what you want. Uh, and, and, and just know that you're, you're competing, you're in a fight there. Um, and uh, I, I think naturally that stays out, um, but where it's caught trouble is, you know, outside the cage anyways, but Connor's attract, attacking people online and, you know, that type of stuff. But he, again, because of Connor, are you gonna, you, are you gonna do that now where everyone has to abstain because of his, his, his behavior? Like, you know what I mean? He's yeah. the problem. Yeah. I think everything else is fine. Okay. Well, great. Well, leaving that aside, you know, we've got another very interesting question for you from Aditya Rangarajan. Is how would you, th what would you think about a matchup between you and Brock Lesnar, Bill? How how do you think that would go? <laughs> I finish him. You finish. Easy. He's not a fighter. He's a wrestler. Um, he d he can't take a punch. He doesn't know how to throw a punch. He shoots a double leg, he's, and he's a big and strong dude. He's not going to take me down. He's just not going to take DC down. DC's going to defend his double leg, and he's going to beat him up. I would do the same thing. Um, anyone he hasn't been able to take down, he gets finished by. Kane, uh, Overeem, look at those fights. Um, and he's not going to take me down. So I'll, I'll take that fight any day of the week. Okay. But I think uh, DC is in front of you in line. So what oh, you, absolutely. Did you think he that? Is. Yeah. He, he, he's the older guy. You, yeah. you have to, you know, older statesman. Yeah. He gets first dip. Absolutely. <laughs> so do you think that fight's actually going to materialize? Absolutely. That's the one that's, that's it's getting made, and they're saying probably August. Uh, he's already in camp training for it. I know Brock is sort of dragging his feet, and, and they're trying to figure that part out. I don't know if it's a money issue. Yeah. Um, but he's in the testing pool. He's been tested, and DC, that's the fight he's asked for. Dana said he'll give it to him. Um, that's why he's been sitting on the sidelines waiting for that. So that that unless for whatever reason it, it stalls on Brock's end, UFC is wanting to give it to Daniel, and Daniel wants it. Now, now talking about DC, he, he he has I think said that he's got his last one or two fights left in him, right? Yeah, you know what? It was supposed to be. This is it. Everyone's telling him. Last conversation I had with him, I said the same thing. All the other training partners, coaches, they want him to get this big payday and cash out. Man, he's done it all in the sport. He's forty years old. Nothing left to prove. Um, He's not on any picogram, so you know he's not getting any younger. And no help in that regard. So just, just, just ride off to in the sunset like GSP. But wouldn't you want to see DC versus John Jones one last time? That be the last fight at heavyweight? I'd love to see that another five times. To be quite honest, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, for me selfishly, absolutely. I, I'm a fan, just like you. I'd love to see him fight. I, I think that last fight was one great. I felt it was going in his favor, the momentum of it, um, and then he got caught. Um, but, you know, at, at the same uh, time, you know, he has won two belts, he defended both belts, no one's ever done that. And, uh, you know, he doesn't have anything left to prove. Again, even if he fights him at heavyweight, are they going to allow him to be dirty and, and give him uh, a pass, just like the last couple of fights, and say it's just picograms? Yeah. And not be able to explain how those picograms are getting into him? They haven't ever been able to find a substance. Where did those picograms come from? How come no one else says them? Yeah. Um, no. So like, why are you gonna, why are you gonna, why are you gonna get involved with that nonsense? He's got a family, got a great broadcast career. Get your couple of mil with Brock and, and, and just ride off, man. Now, like you said, 
He's an elder statesman. After this, would you continue to look forward to, of course, forward to him for uh, advice then? Does he, he, does he get into that advisory kind of role for younger fighters like you then? Always. He, he's the team captain of the AKA. He has that uh, title for a reason. He leads by example. Um, and, you know, when he's, whenever he's there, you can always pick his brain, um, shoot him a message. Yeah, he was very, you know what, he was very helpful when I got into the sport. He was very helpful after my Arizona fight when I had a setback there. Um, and he, he uh, you know, before we signed this contract, he checked out the opponent, gave the green light. So uh, he, he's always there, man. It's just a matter of always reaching out and picking his brain. Sometimes uh, you forget to do that. Um, but uh, he's the most humble and most available guy there is. Well, awesome. Any last words, uh, Arjun, before we uh, let you go to sleep since you're, <laughs> since you're literally ready, primed up in your bed with your pillow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Um, you know, well, but I appreciate the support from you guys, uh, all the fans in India. Um, your, your show is doing great stuff. Keep it up. Um, and I hope everyone tunes in. May 5th is my brother's birthday, so I'm dedicating the fight oh, to awesome. him. Awesome. Uh, and it's going to be a great, great performance. It's in Canada's capital of Ottawa. Uh, and I'm going to do everyone proud and bring the house down. It'll be on TSN TV out this way. Um, and I guess Sony and media for you guys. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. I appreciate the support. Keep supporting. And thank you so much. Uh, when do we expect to see you in India again? Of course, we, we met up with you on your last trip here. When, when do we expect to see you here again? Um, I will for sure be out there after my next one in the uh, same time run for the Shadu and, and that type of thing. Uh, there's a couple of projects I'm working on. I, I want to get finalized before I come out. Uh, I want to get this contract sorted out. I want to get a couple other things I have on, on, on hold for after this fight. Um, I won't be coming in the summer months. I don't want to melt while I'm out there. Come on, man. <laughs> so I'll be probably uh, October, November-ish is when you can expect me. Okay, great. Well, we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you so much for chatting with us and uh, all the best for your fight and we will be watching and supporting you. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. And talk to you soon. Take care. Cheers. Well, that was us uh, chatting with Arjun Bullard who has his fight against Juan uh, the Kraken Adams on uh, May 5th, of course, here May 5th in India on uh, Sony. And we will be watching and supporting him and his views, of course, on the topic for the day, religion in MMA. And, of course, we had uh, Mohammed uh, uh, Farhad on the show and Jitender Khare. So we would like to thank all three of them, Arjun Bullard, Mohammed Farhad, Jitender Khare, for joining us uh, uh, today. Sorry we had to uh, uh, take a break in between. Uh, uh, Arjun, of course, is busy training for his fight. Uh, so, you know, we uh, were able to speak to him w when he got free and we are very thankful for that time. Uh, that was the show for today and uh, uh, I think there are a lot of lessons uh, uh, in the show today. So I hope all of you rewind it and watch it again and listen carefully to what everybody has to say and take the positive out of this show today. Remember, always stay positive and uh, that's the message for today. This is Parveen Devas signing out, saying thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Parveen Devas, MMA India Show, MMAindia.com. Cheers. Have a great day.